this is Donna Dracunis, and this is our, I've lost count of how many, but one of the classes in our Icelandic sweater, aka chicken sweater class. And today we're almost finished with the sweater. So we're going to talk about what to do at the top of the yoke for the shaping of the neck and the upper shoulders and the back. And we're also going to have a little show and tell and stuff like that. So I think I would love to, if you guys have some knitting with you to start some of your sweater with you to start with show and tell, cause I have mine and um, it's, I did, I'm not quite as far as I wanted to be for this class, but if you remember in the last class, I only had one sleeve done. So I'm almost, I'm almost caught up. Um, I did, I finished the whole bottom of the yoke up to the decrease of my first decrease. Mm -hmm. So that should go fast now because I'm going to be having fewer and fewer stitches. So I have my chickens and I did a little triangle pattern underneath them from the ethnic knitting book. And then after I decrease um, in the next row, I'm going to do the triangles upside down. So the brown ones will be pointing up to mm -hmm. mirror above the chickens. And that'll be the next section. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that yet. Uh, you can see I'm going to make it into a cardigan because I've got my steak stitches there. And I just mm -hmm. did, you know, A, B, A, B, like we discussed for putting the colors in. So that's my, that's my sweater. I'm really happy. But it, I'm kind of glad I have it done just as much because I think you can see when I hold it up, and you've probably seen that on your own, how after you join the sweaters, when you do the yoke, it's actually the front, the back, and the shoulders, it's all of those pieces of the sweater together. I don't know like who invented this kind of sweater, um, but I think it's really cool. Uh, to my brain, the front, back, sleeve, sleeve, sew it together is um, easier to comprehend someone making it up, but that's probably because I used to sew. And that's how you put garments together when you sew. Um, but I always love the yoke sweater because it kind of just seems like magic after you put the pieces together as it act, you can see it forming the, the, you know, there's some stitches here, there's the front, there's the back, blah, blah. It's kind of like a little magical thing to me. So I find that fascinating. So I would love for anyone who wants to, um, to, show me where you're at and what you're working on and let me know if you have any questions from where you are. Um, and for those who are watching, you know, you can um, set your view to speaker view and whoever is talking will be bigger. I'll show mine off. Okay. So Let's see. I have it done except um, grafting the underarms and sewing in the ends and it's not a whole lot to tell, I guess I, maybe if I turn this, did I, and I lost you. I yeah, turn this, this yeah, turning the camera thing go with the challenge, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm camping and so I'm just <laughs> using this little iPad, but. Um, Beautiful. It's, it's there, Beautiful. it's done. Um, and I, the only thing to say show and tell wise is that I bound off the, the collar with a regular bind off and it was a little tight and after blocking it didn't stretch enough so I took it out and I did your super stretchy bind off that you shared with um starry night and so it's a, a super nice easy where you two stitches two stitches to one yeah that, that was really really stretchy really right. really really stretchy yeah so, so it makes a nice wide open comfortable collar and I'm happy with it. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, stretchy bind offs. Um, thanks for reminding of that because we're stopped. We want it to easily fit over our head and not choke us. I have two different stretchy bind offs that I like, and I have videos for both of those. Um, usually I am using them for shawls, but I will send you the links to those videos when I send the link to this video. So there's the one that um, Heather mentioned from the Starry Night Shawl that kind of doubles the number of stitches you have. And the other one is, um, I call it a decreased bind off. I, I've heard it called all kinds of names. Uh, in fact, I think some people call it the Icelandic bind off where you um, knit two and then instead of passing the stitch over, which is what makes bind offs tight, 
you knit the two stitches that you just made together through the back. Um, so it's, it, in another way, it's adding an extra stitch in between each bind off stitch. So that makes it much stretchier. I'll send you both of those links so you can try them. Anyone else? I'll do, I'll go. Um, I'm still where I was last time because I want to do something. Uh, I want to do short rows on the neck, but um, I'm actually really, it, it fits great. I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to finish up the neck. So I'm really glad we're on this class because <laughs> I, I could do it, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to rip back. So I'm going to wait and right, figure out right. exactly how to do the, I mean, how many short rows I should do and that kind of thing. And then, um, then try to decide on a neck. I don't like a super tight neck. I can't have anything. I can't wear turtlenecks or anything like that. So I want it to be more open. Um, so I probably just won't go as decrease as much, um, mm -hmm. before I do something Great. with it. Yeah. Anyone else? I can go. I, so I feel like I've missed half the classes because I moved right in the middle of it. But I no, found that my was really bad planning. It really was. I when I signed up for the class, I had no idea I was going to be moving. So, so I found my yarn last week, which made me very happy. <laughs> so, so I'm literally at the bottom. Like I just cast on. I'm about to start a little bit of shaping for the waist, and yeah. But I do actually watch the videos and take notes. So thank you for providing those and the PowerPoints. Great. great. I got stuck last when I got to this point and I was like, it's a little big, but what do I do? And it, yeah, your notes helped me figure it out. So thank you. Super, super. Yeah. Because there's no, I mean, I spread the lessons out because I know some of us, we have to finish the project during the class or it'll just never get finished. Cause I've done that myself at lots of classes. So I wanted to have like time. So those who wanted to do that could keep up and finish together, but there's no, um, you know, final exam or anything. So you can finish it whenever you get, get done with it. Um, I just didn't, I know um, I have one sweater that's like probably eight years or seven, six years on the needles that, um, so I don't want anyone to have this one turn into that. <laughs> I came into the class with the goal of, if I have a sweater by Christmas, I will be happy. So um, Super. I will go next. Uh, I have a body. My arms are not joined yet, but they are done. I did a contrasting hem uh, and also on the uh, sleeve. And I have been playing with my yoke pattern. I've been trying to design something. So this is kind of where I'm leaning with something autumnal uh, with leaves and that kind of thing. So I have, I've been designing, but not knitting much in the last cool. two weeks. Well, that's cool. That's part of the, the planning. The planning of the yoke is, you know, a lot, a lot of work and uh, it's worth it's worth um planning it out rather than knitting it two or three times <laughs> unless you want to you know um i can it's go next beautiful um, okay i have um i'm about part of the way through the yoke and i have the neutral colorway but i've added this um I don't even know what this is, but I have but it around. Fall color, fall so colors. It's, yeah. it's got this sort of multiple shades of orange and stuff. And so you can see my part of my plan spelled out better on the sleeve. And nice. I had to redo the sleeves. I think I started a sleeve maybe six times because the first one, I didn't like the design. And then the next one was too tight. And then the next one was to this. And then anyway, so finally they are not going to change again, even though they don't match exactly but they're good enough and um initially i wanted to do something around the hem but i don't really like what i did except i might uh, duplicate stitch some more to it because it's just some little orange blocks that don't really yeah you could up. add a little bit of the dark color yeah so i thought yeah. i could sort of do duplicate that and then stitch is great <laughs> what duplicate stitch is yes. great <laughs> how to hide a world of hurts but anyway this is the main point of this is going to sort of be heart like heart and then upside down heart with this zigzag Sweet. line that goes around them so we're getting there and i think i'll have enough it's a little yarn chicken going on which is appropriate for the chicken theme yeah. and i have enough of everything else so that's me that's great i'm in this comics group um comics class group and um someone on there made a comic oh, because their mother said uh 
they said, mom, you know, what are you doing? She says, I'm knitting. He says like, why are you knitting so fast? She goes, I'm playing yarn chicken. And they just thought that was so funny. And I'm like, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> we do that. And we knit faster and faster to um, see if we can finish before we run out of yarn. <laughs> I can go next. Okay. I just have to unmute myself because the lawn guy is at the house next door. Uh, we decided to clean out the basement and three sheds. So I'm late for the party. But I finished the body and I'm starting the sleeves today. And uh, it's a, a, lot of, a lot of knitting, but it looks beautiful. It really looks beautiful. And since I signed up for this, I lost 15 pounds. So it'll be a little big on me, but that's okay. <laughs> I can wow. never do yeah. So, but it really, it's just beautiful. I mean, the way it's coming out, it's just, um, you can see under this light, really, really nice. So, so the sleeves start today. And by the 16th, I really want to have just about this whole thing done because, uh, we go up to Maine all the time to see my kids. And, uh, you know, I'm at a point right now where wearing a heavy sweater is fine with me, you know? So, uh, so that's, that's where great. I'm at, but it's a great pattern. Excellent. Anyone else want to share? Actually, it's a great enough pattern that I've already started on the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was thinking of another one to make and I was de-stashing yarn last week too. And I was Yeah, thinking, I have oh, so <laughs> much yarn in my stash and I was like, oh, this, you know, so yeah, oh, I mean, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have... I don't have any worsted weight yarn in my stash. My stash is mostly lace weight and fingering weight, yeah, um, but I have too. more of this yarn <laughs> left. And um, <laughs> I, I'm making my sweater for someone else. So, but looking at you guys is like, I want an orange one. I want a blue <laughs> one. Do I want an orange one or a blue one or both? <laughs> well, this uh, is actually like things. a DK, but I figured that's fine because I just adjust the, exactly you know, just the and numbers. That's the but whole point of this. The whole point of this is that you can adjust everything. You can, um, I mean, you can start from scratch with the worksheets in the book and figure it out, or you can start with the pattern and then, you know, adjust from there. So yeah, perfect. When you just said orange and blue, I was like, Ooh, I went to Illinois. I wonder if she has any of the blue yarn left. Cause by the time I get to the yoke, that would be a nice contrast with the orange. So I may have to email you after class. <laughs> sure. I, I have, I have, it's all undyed. So I can dye whatever you want. If you want more yarn. Yeah. Um, it's undyed. I know what I used, what colors I used for, you know, for the yarns that you have. Um, and who was it that wanted green as a contrast? Are you here? I forgot who, was that Sue? I'm not sure who's here. Maybe he's not here, but um, yeah. So if you wanted a different contrasting color, you know, a skein of a different contrasting color or something, just let me know. Yeah. I ran into a little snafu. Okay. Um, I was about to start my yoke. Like I did, I did like the first round of contrasting color and then I realized that one of my sleeves, I, I mean, obviously I attached it, but the increases are on the top right? oh. instead of here. I just attached it at the wrong place. So I was like, oh, should, should I, it's the same, right? The, the dimensions of the sleeve are the same. So I was thinking, oh, should I just leave it? But I'm not. No, I would change I it. I didn't really. Yeah. No, it's, it's easy to do because um yeah it does look the same but it the shape is a little different it's like just smoother here and the, having the okay. increases under here yeah, will flow yeah. better with it'll fit a little bit better yes i think you'll be yeah. happier with it even if you can't yeah, see the increases too. i think you'll be happier with the fit if you do that okay yeah okay i had put mine on the needle um i didn't do the same thing you did but i had put mine on the needle somehow that I couldn't knit it when I came to it. It was like backwards or something. So I had to like take yeah. it off and put it back on the needle again to get it where I could knit across the stitches. Yeah. That's a dumb yeah. mistake, but yeah, I was probably watching deal. television. But I love this yarn so much. I just want to say, I love this marl. It's beautiful. Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm super really? happy with this yarn. I'm really super happy. Well, I love I love how it feels in the marl too, but I'm so yeah. happy that 
at least for me, it's so easy to do the color work. And it, it, sometimes when I do color work, if the yarn's not really perfect for the pattern I'm doing or whatever, it, I have to block it because it comes out lumpy. And this is unblocked. I can't even believe how nice the color work is coming out in this yarn. It just, it's like it was made for color work. Yeah. Did you use a larger needle for the stranded knitting? I do usually, but I didn't on this one because I used um, a larger needle on my first cuff and I didn't like it as much. I did not redo the cuff because I figured eh, it's not going to show up that much. Uh, not even sure you can yeah. tell the difference looking at them, but I didn't like it as much. So I stuck with the same size needle. Um, and I, I'm happy with how it worked on the yoke. Also, I have years of practice on color work. So I know that I open up my stitches and my floats aren't tight. I know I don't have that problem. So I wasn't worried if the yoke got a little smaller because the yoke's going to get smaller and smaller anyway. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, one, but, the, but if you do, if you're newer at color work or you struggle with getting the floats long enough, you know, having the bigger needle helps with all of that. Um, but okay. for those of you who haven't, started the color work yet um my biggest tip when you're working on color work is whenever you do more than two stitches in a color make sure you open up the stitches on your right needle before you keep knitting you know how we try to like bunch everything up in our hand sorry my video is backwards i think today um so this this is my right hand so you know when you knit and you keep all those new stitches and you just make this big wad in your right hand. Don't do that with color work. Every time you switch colors, loosen up the stitches on the right needle so that your, your floats will be naturally uh, relaxed. That, that's, uh, that's the clue. But those of you who are jumped ahead, look like you had no problem in beautiful color work that I've seen so far. Um, is there anyone else that wanted to share? Well, I've, I've been a couple weeks behind everybody because it mine's a, a big, it's a 2X sweater. So it's a lot of stitches and everything. But I'm just starting the yoke. But I wanted to show you. Here's the um, bottom of my sleeve. Oh, that's so pretty. And then I go up and then I've got, and I've got it connected and I've got like two rows done on the yoke. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. It's going to take a while, but I've been about yeah, two weeks a lot behind. of stitches at the beginning of the yoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. But I've got it all connected and everything. And I did the um, uh, shaping in the back. So I did an extra mm -hmm. five rows on the back mm -hmm. before I started the color work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I've already got that done. So. Oh, so Ready? you're 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 good. You're good. Yeah. The, for me, the the most arduous or hardest part of these sweaters is putting the pieces all on, and then those first, the first inch after you join yeah. it, because it's 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 all like deformed because it's trying to pull in where the armholes are and everything. Once you get up like an inch or so past that, it flows more freely on the needles. Okay. Uh, so that first, the first like inch or so after you join, it's like you can tell when you get to the sleeve because it's pulling in where the underarm is. And um, but now you can see on mine, it's you know, it's totally smooth on yeah. the needles now, with no pulling. But this first, yeah. first inch was more challenging for pushing it around on the needle. I think yeah. I'm going to have to change to a shorter needle when I decrease. Um, I don't think it's gonna, I have interchangeable, so it's super easy for me to change to a shorter needle um, whenever I get to the next section. But remember, you can also use two circulars. If you um, don't wanna mess with the giant long needle, you can split your you know, body in half, you know, piece in half and put half the stitches on one and another and <laughs> use two circulars just like you would on a hat or socks or whatever. So for the single circular, how long are you using for, for your size? I guess it's probably, you know, I think I measured it. And I think it's 48 inches, but I might be 60. I, it's really long. But you Is it a medium it. or a large? This is a small. 
Oh, small. Okay. This is small. Yes. This is not for me. It's a smaller size than I would make for myself. Um, so yeah. So for the, for the small, it's probably 48. I, I think I, I'd rather have the needle be a little bit shorter. So, so the stitches, you know, yeah. push themselves around. If the needle is uh, too close to exactly the same size as your knitting piece, then you're, you're always stretching it and push, you know, you have to manipulate it. But if your needles are, so, you know, a, a few inches shorter than the circumference of the piece you're working on, I find that the stitches just automatically push themselves around more freely. All right, I've lost track of who's shared. I don't know if there's anyone else who wants to share, but um, if you are, now's your chance to pipe up. I think we might have gotten everyone. Okay, um, and if you didn't share and you want to share later or you have a question later, just interrupt me. I'm going to start my slideshow now, um, and we're going to look at what to do after you get as far as Heather and I have gotten, which is you've uh, you know got a good part of your yoke finished, but you're not done with it. So let me find my slideshow and share my screen. And I think everyone should automatically see that. Okay, so here's the same basic thing we've been looking at, which is the pieces of the Icelandic yoke sweater. And so today we're going to talk about the, the shaping of it at the, you know, at the top and the length of the yoke or depth of the yoke and the neck shaping and neck band options. So this is the basic information and I, it's highlighted in yellow here on the screen, the part that we're talking about. This is from my ethnic knitting book just a basic overview of where we are in the process and um, you know, the steps. So I, I made this sweater in eight, I made it into eight steps and we're like up to step uh, seven or, or, or the end of six. So we're getting, we're getting there, we're getting there. So this is just zoomed in. What I wanted to show you there is um, just how that last section above the decreases is what is going to affect how small your neck is. So the sweater, that um, pattern that we have, it's so fairly open neck. If you, if you knit and stop, if you use the measurements for the yoke height that's in the pattern, the neck's gonna be fairly open. But if you knit more um, before, before that final decrease or even after the final decrease for the neck um, plane, either in ribbing or stockinette stitch before you start the neckline, you can bring the neck up higher. So we're gonna look at some options there. So here's what I'm talking about. The, the sweaters here in the photographs, that's basically where the neck would be um, in the pattern that you have. It's, you can see that it's not gonna be um, right up at your throat, not like my t-shirt, in other words, not like my t-shirt. It'd be more like maybe what you would see in a men's sweater where the shirt collar can come out, you know, be a little bit more open like that. So be out from your neck on all sides, but you can knit further before you do your ribbing and you can do, you know, a, a small amount of ribbing, or you could do, you know, eight inches of ribbing and make a turtleneck. Um, so either of those kind of things can be done here. So this is the same thing, but with a couple photos I got from Ravelry showing what those look like. So this one on the left, I'm not sure if you can see it because it's white, but she start, seemed to have started that texture stitch, that texture rib stitch that she's got in the collar a few inches before the actual neck. So that's, that's top of the body there is knit in the same stitch as the collar. So, so if, so say you got up to where we are in our pattern, it says go this far, but you wanted to go further on your neck. You could start ribbing right away if you want. And then the further you knit with ribbing, the more it draws in, right? So it will stay stretched out nice around the yoke in the lower part 
and then draw in the further you knit at the top of um, at the top of it. And um, I'm sorry for my howling cat. I'm right here. Oh, come on, come on. I don't know what's wrong with him if he's got dementia or he's deaf, but he gets lost sometimes and <laughs> does that. Come on. He knows where I am now. He's just being a brat. But anyway, so that one. Um, and then you can see, I think she just from the look of the neck from the photo, she's probably got about six inches that's folded over to a three inch fold fold. That's what I would think that looks like to me. Now, the one on the right with the horses. You can see above the color work that there's about an inch or so, just guessing from the photo, about an inch of plain knitting before the neckline that brings the neck up. Now I'm not sure, cause I don't have the photo of the front of this here. Um, that could just be short rows. That's just uh, raising the back neck. But it looks to me like it's um, probably goes all the way around. Um, so there's some stockinette stitch above the color work before the, the neck band drawing in. So those are, those are two options for doing that. Okay, here's a bunch more from Ravelry. So if you, if you wanna look for like some kind of ideas from Ravelry uh, uh, or ideas of like different kinds of ways, ways to arrange the colors and the stitches for the, for the neck band, Ravelry, we talked about this at the beginning of the class, Ravelry has so many um, yoke sweaters. I just searched for yoke sweater and so many yoke sweaters, you can just look at them. Um, for ideas. So this first one with the guy, the color work goes right up to the ribbing and then the, they, the, the designer started ribbing right away. And you can see how the ribbing flares out on the guy's shoulders and then it pulls in a little bit when it gets actually on his neck. And the, the one with the woman on the right is the same thing. It's almost like a funnel neck rather than a turtleneck because they start the ribbing right after the color work rather than putting a, an inch or so of stock and net stitch in there. So that makes that, that section on the upper body really be part of the neck. Now, um, what you could do on that is if you feel like it's, um, you want the neck to get tighter, um, you could go down a needle size, you know, uh, or even two. So you could say, start your neck on your, you're knitting your body, say on size seven needles, you could start that ribbing on size seven for a couple inches. Um, if you're making a high neck like that, then you could go to a six or a five without changing the number of stitches or anything. And that will make the neck draw in more as you get higher on it. Um, a neck usually has about the same number of stitches as a hat. So in worsted weight, that's so usually about a hundred stitches because it, you know, it has to fit over your head and then you don't want it choking you. So you want it to be about the same size that a hat would be. And then of course it's ribbing. So it, um, if you do it with ribbing, it draws in more. So all of these are kinds of turtlenecks that have um, different things, different amount of uh, plain knitting and color work knitting before the actual neckline. So the, the, the one that's got the brown collar, um, you can see that it starts right after the color work, but it looks like she went a little further with the color work closer to the neckline. And this is a chunkier yarn too, so it'll make things lay a little different. And then on the next one in the center, um, the color work goes up pretty high and then there's a little bit of stockinette stitch. So she doesn't start the ribbing until She's got enough knitting to reach where she wants that neck to be. So just because she changed the stitch, it looks really different. And then she made enough to fold down. The one on the right, again, the gray one, you can see that she began the ribbing right after, in this case, it would be color work, but she did cables. But you can see how the ribbing starts here, not way up here. So you can decide uh, above your color work what you wanna do. Oh, you don't have to do anything. You can, you can make, let your neck be larger. And there are a lot of the patterns that have the more open neckline. But this is just to show you that you can, you know, do whatever you want. Um, just back up a little. So anywhere from, you know, when you get done with your yoke shaping 
and then you can go up, as, you know, as far as you want for um, to, up to a turtleneck. You could add a little bit, you could add a medium amount, you could add a lot. Okay, so I'm going to talk about short rows here, and I kind of, um, the, the other ones that we talked about earlier, I felt were optional. And these, I feel, are um, much more important. I mean, they're still optional. You'll get a sweater if you don't put them in. But it'll fit much better if you do because of the shape of the body. So here's my little unhappy knitter. And her sweater, it has no, um, no short row shaping before the neck. So the neck's going to be as high in the back as it is in the front. So one of two things is going to happen. She's going to put the sweater on and pull it, the, pull it down in the front so that the neck isn't choking her. And then the back of the sweater is going to rise up and be too short. Or she's going to pull the back of the sweater down so it's the same length as the front and the neck's going to come up and possibly feel constricting or choke her. So that's, that's what can tend to happen, especially if you're bringing it in as a close neck. If you're leaving the neck way down here, it's not going to have that problem, really, because the neck's going to be away from your actual neck all the way around. But if you're going to bring it up to a, to a, a tight crew neck um, or a turtleneck, this, the, the higher you go with your body before you have your collar, the more of this problem will occur. So our happy knitter has some short rows just below the collar. So, and I drew them in two different places here because different designers and different um, books will tell you slightly different places to put the short rows at the top of the yoke. So I wanna kind of point out to you what the options are and they all will give you the same result, which is that they raise the back of the sweater and a little bit on the sides, because you know, remember the short rows go, um, you know, into the front a little bit. They don't just stay on the back stitches. They go a little bit over the shoulders. It, when we talked about it last time, they were lowered down, but this is essentially the same thing. So uh, I think they basically all give the same goal, but depending what you're doing with your color work and your stitches, you may decide you wanna put them in a different spot. So that's, that's what I've kind of got here as uh, the options. So um, they can be done before the neck ribbing, as in this drawing on the left. They can even be a little bit lower than that and they can be part of the neck ribbing. Now, I um, just discovered the part of the neck ribbing actually today <laughs> when I was prepping for this class. So that was really cool because I get to keep learning new things. I have never seen or noticed short row shaping in the actual neck collar stitches itself um, until today. So that was a new thing for me. And I, I'm trying to decide what I want to do on my sweater because I might want to shape it that way. Um, but I haven't decided yet. Okay, so this is what I had in ethnic knitting book that you have. And when I wrote this book, I said to um, work the back neck short rows when the yoke is a couple of inches less than it is, than the desired length. Now, I don't do that anymore because depending on where you're putting your color pattern and stuff, you might still be doing color work when you're two inches less than the um, desired length. So if you're not gonna switch to solid for the upper few inches, then I wouldn't put the short rows here because you don't wanna have a gap between your color patterning in the back, but like say between two, two different patterns. You don't wanna try to follow charts patterns with short rows and how do you make that even work? I have no idea. Um, so now I do it just below the neckband. So I finish all my color work and just before I start the neckband, um, usually before I do that final decrease, I will do the couple of short rows. So, it's, um, so you can do it before or after the final decrease. 
if you do it before the final decrease, it's really like shaping the, the body and the shoulders more than just the neck band. And I think, I personally think that gives it a little bit more of a, of a better fit for what we're trying to do. Because what we're trying to do is, is raise the, the body before the neck band is on, not just make the neck band thicker. Does that make sense? Okay, I guess it sort of doesn't. Um, but as we if we look back to here, uh, this bottom right one in the gray, the bottom of the neck band actually is the upper part of the yoke. Because she started those, you know, did the upper upper part of the yoke um, with ribbing. So in such a case like that, then I would do probably those short rows at the beginning of that ribbing section rather than in the pattern section, because in the pattern section, you would probably still be doing color work or in this case, the design has cables, um, but you'd still be working in pattern. And I don't want to mess with the short rows while I'm working in the pattern. Okay, so this is so this is the, the options there, but anywhere, anywhere. Um, below the neckline works for this, um, doing it um, if you're still in stockinette stitch like that. Now, this is where I discovered the one in the neckband. I was re-looking through Elizabeth Zimmerman's um, stuff on yoke sweaters, and I noticed that she did the short rows after she starts the neck. So she did, she gets down to about 96 stitches, which is what I said is about a hundred stitches for worsted weight for, for a neck usually. Um, and um, she's doing knit two purl, two ribbing. So a multiple of four. And she says, first work over the 48 stitches of the back neck, then turn and work over 50 stitches, then turn and do 52, 54, 56. And, you know, you've almost done then. Um, but she's going two stitches further each time. So notice that when we did the short row shaping lower down, I started with the longer short row and then I got shorter. But Elizabeth Zimmerman and some other things, um, designers I've seen um, at the neckline, they start with the shorter, the shortest short row and then get a little longer. And um, some people say that it, it makes a little bit of smoother transition that way and lays more flat on your, on your, you know, shoulders, back of your neck. I've got some sort of hunched over with whatever is with my uh, family DNA with sh hunched shoulders. So it doesn't make a difference to me. Um, I haven't noticed it not fitting either way, but that's, um, that's something that, to think about, to doing it like this. So, so that's say we're working from the bottom up and these lines going back and forth are our rows of knitting. So we're starting in the center here, we go to the left. And uh, so Elizabeth Zimmerman did, you know, so you did like half of the stitches plus two, whatever. Then you go back on the other side, you go to half plus two. And then you go the next row, three stitches past that say, and then, go back three stitches past that. Just getting longer and longer on the short rows. Um, and of course you would, you know, probably do four or six rows of short rows at the yarn. Um, I did six rows on the bottom of the yoke. I think I'm probably gonna do the same thing at the top, but I'm gonna work with the four short rows and then try to lay it out and see what it looks like. Um, you could even try it on at that point because you've got the whole sweater uh, except for the neck done. And um, so trying it on before you do the neck and see how high it is and where that, that's, that's definitely worthwhile if you're not sure what you want to do with the neck. Okay, so you know after you decide how high up you want your neck and if, if and where you want to put the short rows, you have to decide what kind of finishing you want on the neck. 
So these are just some options that I think work really nicely with the yoke sweater. So the first two are really nice. If you leave the, the neck lower, if you want to have some more air on your neck or whatever, you're going to wear a shirt with a collar under it um, and you don't want the neck to come up so high is you can do a rolled edge where you just keep knitting and stockinette stitch till you bind off and then it'll roll to the outside. So you don't have to really do anything with that. You can do an I-cord bind off, which um, creates a, I don't know, it kind of looks like the cording on a, a, like a cord around the neck line. And it, uh, it doesn't roll or anything. It will hold it nice and flat, but it makes a nice finish on the edge. Um, and then of course you can do things with ribbing. So with ribbing, you can do it, you know, anywhere from the scoop neck up to the crew neck with an inch of ribbing. Um, you can do that. Some patterns, there's some patterns that do, um, especially on the higher necks. I don't think it would, I would like it on the really low one, but you could try it. You, um, knit two inches of ribbing and then you fold it down and stitch it whip stitch it down so you have like a double collar that's um generally something that you see in commercial sweaters on on in, in the men's department um it, it lays a little bit differently than just making ribbing and binding off if you make ribbing and fold it in um and you can even knit the second half that's going to be on the inside you can continue in ribbing on a smaller needle or you can switch to stockinette stitch so the inside will be flatter um, and then fold it down to have a double thick neckline. So that's something, uh, it lays a little differently whether it's a single or folded down and double, but it's the, basically the same style. And then of course, like those ones I saw with the long ones, you could just go rip, you know, up to like eight inches of ribbing and, and then you have a, a, a long turtleneck. Um, and there's probably ton, there's probably other ideas, but those are the ones that I think of when I am um, envisioning what to do on a yoke sweater. Um, yeah, so if you're gonna do ribbing, you probably wanna match it to what you did at the bottom of the cuffs and the bottom of the sweater. But these other things um, would be, a, make a different style at the neckline. Okay. Okay, now I don't wanna, ignore the cardigan people, because I know there's you know, quite a few people here making a cardigan. So when you're making a cardigan, and you should look at some cardigans that you have, there's two ways you can put the neck band on and the front button band, button and buttonhole bands. So um, the first one on the top of this picture, you knit the neck band first, and then you add the front bands. So in this case, if you wanted to, you could knit all the way up, Knit your collar, your neckband and everything with the steak stitches there, and then steak it all the way down and add your button bands. That's option one. Option two is you stop knitting the sweater before you knit the, the top neckband. You steak it, you knit the button and buttonhole bands on, and then you add the neckband. So in which case the neckband kind of overlaps and comes together with a buttonhole in it. In the pre first one, all the buttonholes and buttons are on the button bands. In the second option, the top buttons on neckband. Now I've seen sweaters done both ways. Um, I tend to favor the bottom one. Just I kind of think it's a little bit more elegant when the neckband comes together with the top button. But what I would suggest is look at some sweaters that you have, some cardigans that you have, and see how they are done. And if you never notice this or can't tell the difference, um, then decide by how you want to knit your sweater. Do you want to knit the whole thing in the round up to the... Uh, top of the neckband and then steak the whole thing? Or do you want to just steak the body and then add the neckband working back and forth afterwards? Um, both of these are, like I said, I've seen both of these on, on different sweaters that I own and patterns that I've seen. So there's no real right or wrong here. It's a personal preference. So um, some of you for the cardigan makers, won't be adding your neckband this week because we'll be steaking in the next class. 
and then you'll add your neck band after that if you want to have the neck band be as shown in the bottom drawing. Okay, so there's more stuff you can do with yoke sweaters. So if you're really enjoying this and you want to look at yoke sweaters further, um, of course, top down is also very popular now. So I would say probably half the half or more of the sweater patterns on Ravelry for yoke sweaters are top down because that's more of the trend in knitting these days. Um, of course you know, you can knit anything top down or bottom up pretty much. Uh, sometimes the designers have some really unique shaping that they do at the top for a top down that would be hard to reverse engineer to do up, you know, bottom up. It might not be worth the hassle. Um, and of course it's fun to knit sweaters either way. So, um, but Elizabeth Zimmerman, this was in Meg Swanson's book. Um, well, it's Elizabeth Zimmerman's book, The Opinionated Knitter, but really half the books by Meg Swanson that she added stuff to Elizabeth Zimmerman's old patterns and things. And she says, these are things you can do on with a circular sweater, like with the yoke. You can, uh, you can do a saddle shoulder. You can do a raglan. You can do a shirt yoke. I'm not sure exactly what she means by that. She's... Uh, all these things. I've never seen most of these, or if I did, I didn't notice them as yoke sweaters, but um, this is really interesting that I would, I would love to try one of these ones down here, entrelock. I would love to make a sweater with a, a circular yoke sweater and do the yoke in entrelock. I think that would be so much fun. So I might have to and order uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman's wool gathering there. So these letters here are things that, uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman uh, that makes ones and publishes at Schoolhouse Press some oh, some old the old patterns by Elizabeth Zimmerman and some videos and different things. So I just wanted to let you know that um, there's like a lot of options that you can do that have very similar similar techniques. What what makes it different is basically how you organize the decreases between when you join the body and the neck that you can make different different. Um, designs and different stitches, maybe not just going smoothly around, but like where a one comes up here and then another patterns here with the raglan or the saddle shoulder. So um, there's a lot to explore on this if you find it uh, fascinating. Okay, so that's it for this um, lesson. Um, we're gonna come back in two weeks. Uh, we can have, of course, any time um, still have time today or in email before then or in our next final lesson Q&A. You can send me questions anytime, but we're going to go um, talk about the steaking and button bands for finishing the cardigan. And um, on the pullover, really the only finishing is, besides weaving in ends is doing those underarm seams. So we'll do that. And I'll show you some little tricks I use for weaving in ends on color work because I'm I'm lazy and I like to weave in ends the easiest ways possible. So I'll show you um, some things about how I weave in ends on color work and ribbing um, as well. So that's it on my slideshow there. Again, I'll send you this with the videos for the two kinds of stretchy bind offs um, with, with the link to this video uh, probably tomorrow. So any questions before we wrap up? No, I'm okay. I just have a lot of knitting to do. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm not, maybe not much to do, but I still have a bit. I yep. still have a bit to do. And I might have a lot if I decide like uh, um, Heather to start a second one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So here's the funny thing is like, I have a lot of knitting I have to do for my patterns for my club and knit alongs I'm going to do next year. And it's like, well, if I want to make myself a sweater, then I have to hire someone to knit the samples for my, <laughs> for my patterns for next year. So it kind of seems a little silly. <laughs> but anyway, well, thank you all for coming this week. Um, I will send you the video for this, the videos that I mentioned and the slideshow. So you can, you know, read the instructions for the different things that were written in there um, okay. that you might want to try.
I have a quick Thank question. Thank you, Donna. Yes. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, do you, um, do you bother to, do you block it before you stick it? Or would you normally? I might steam the front. I don't know. Cause it will curl less if it's been blocked. I usually block my sweaters when I'm completely done with them and just wash them and dry, let them dry flat. Yeah. But um, like if the ste if the front uh, edges, um, if I want them to lay flatter, I might like steam it before I do the, you know, the securing and the and the cutting, so that way right. it will it won't roll as much, so it'll be easier to access the edge of it for adding a button band and, or or um, if anyone wants to add, do a zipper, remind me of that. Um, because we can talk about zippers too next week. I just think of like when you, um, when I, I feel like if when I'm blocking it, it would maybe this little ends that I cut would, you know, dissolve. Oh no, we're going to secure, oh, we're okay. going to secure the ends. Okay. And we're going to look at different options for like having them completely hidden. So they're not just hanging out there and no, they're not going to, it's not going to hook unravel when you block it um mm -hmm. and it won't unravel in the future when you wash it because assuming that you're gonna wash, wash it, it <laughs> once a year right sure. <laughs> yeah whether it needs it or not yeah Just, well to make sure you know that when you put it away for the summer if you got a crumb on it or something you don't want right. it there for those moths when they right. come looking for something to eat in the summer <laughs> yeah yeah well, thank you We'll make sure that everything is safe and secure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, okay. happy knitting. Email me if you have any questions, and I will see you back here again in two weeks. Okay. If I don't hear from you before then. Okay. Thanks very much, Donna. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.